Dit is Papa Alfa 0 Eco Tango Eco voor de Daily Minutes met een nieuwsupdate voor vandaag. En dit is het bulletin van zondag. Today's bulletin is always in weekends, will be in English. Right now we will start with some DX news. At the end of the bulletin there will be our Morse code words in different speeds and right after that a small SSTV image. We also have some data today to complete text of our bulletin which will be 8 PSK 1000 around 1500 hertz. 8 PSK 1000 around 1500 hertz. This will be just before the Morse code, just before the Morse code. Whiskey Zero Golf Juliet will be active from Turks and Caicos Islands in ARRL DX SSB contest March 5 and 6 as Victor Papa 5 Hotel. After the contest he will be active as Victor Papa 5 stroke Whiskey Zero Golf Juliet. Seven Danish ham operators will be active from Sri Lanka until March 9 as 4 Sierra 7 Bravo Bravo Golf. They will be operating 80 to 10 meters and also planning EME activity on 2 meters and 70 cents. Juliet Hotel 1 Mike Lima Oscar will be active from Saipan Island, IOTA OC086 March 7 until 11 as Kilo Hotel 0 stroke Juliet Hotel 1 Mike Lima Oscar. He will be operating HF bands. Uniform Alpha 1 Quebec Victor and Romeo Whiskey 3 Foxtrot Shero will be active from Korguyev Island, IOTA Echo Uniform 085 March 5 until 19 as Romeo India 1 Palpa Alpha. They will be operating on HF bands. A group of 13 ham operators will be active from Heard Island until March 20 as Victor Kilo Zero Echo Kilo. They will be operating on all HF bands CW, SSB and RITI. Sierra Papa 2 Foxtrot Uniform Delta will be active from Gambia March and April 2016 as Charlie 5 Foxtrot Uniform Delta. He will be operating on HF bands. Still far away, but a group of British ham radio operators will be active from Chatham Islands, IOTA, Oscar Charlie 038, October 26 until November 9, as Zulu Lima 7 Golf. They will be operating on HF bands. From Australia, this is VK1WIA. As a result of intensive work by research institutes and designing bureaus, the first artificial Earth satellite in the world has now been created. This first satellite was today successfully launched in the USSR. That's the sound of the very first human radio transmission from a man-made moon. And now that Sputnik transmitter has been recreated. A transmitter of the type that was on board Sputnik 1 when it became the world's first artificial satellite and started the space race has been recreated by a Dutch radio amateur. The 58 centimetre polished metal sphere broadcast radio pulses that were heard as it went around the Earth for 21 days, the life of its battery. It was in space for three months, travelling about 70 million kilometres before re-entering the atmosphere to burn up on January 4, 1958. Throughout the world, radio amateurs heard Sputnik transmissions on 20 MHz and 40 MHz. What is known is that Sputnik was pressurised with nitrogen, had whip antennas, valve radio transmitters and a fan to keep it cool. Now Frank Warsenberg, Papa Alpha 3 Charlie, November Oscar has recreated one of the Sputnik radio transmitters using a set of the original Russian tubes. Until 2013, the design was a state secret, but Oleg Borodin, Romeo Victor 3 Golf Mike, found a schematic used for the transmitter. The valves were a wire-ended design, with all electrodes mounted on rods the length of the glass envelope, making them resistant to acceleration and vibration that could be expected during launch. Good times and rock and roll. There are exciting times ahead for digital radio, according to Joan Warner from Commercial Radio Australia, who led a World Dab Workshop in Kuala Lumpur this week. Australia has been broadcasting Dab Plus since 2009 and has achieved 64% coverage of the Australian population. There are up to 30 additional radio stations on air in each capital city since the launch of digital radio. There are now 4,600 vehicles with DAB radios in the capital cities and car manufacturers can see that DAB Plus is here to stay. 
In Australia, there are now 2 million receivers sold, with the cheapest being just $15. Australia wants to roll out digital radio to the remaining 36% of population in regional areas that are not yet covered. We are working with the regulator to plan the rollout of DAB+, and hopefully we will see the first of that rollout starting in 2017 once the planning is done, said Joan Warner. High frequency equipment for the Spratly Islands. The disputed islands in the South China Sea are a continuing subject of claims over ownership and occupation. Occasionally, DXs activate this rare DX entity. Next month, Michael Norterman, Delta Foxtrot 8 Alpha November, is on Layang Layang Island. He will sign as 9 Mike 0 Sierra from April 19 to 29, operating on 160 metres to 6 metres and using CW. For historical reasons, China makes claim to the entire archipelago. Some islands are subject to territorial claims by Taiwan, Vietnam, the Philippines, Malaysia and Brunei. Now, China's Ministry of Defence reveals navigation equipment is on an island. This has caused speculation that it may include HF radar to monitor sea and air traffic. Further developments can be expected, with it being the case of watch this space. International Marconi Day to go ahead. Recently, Norman Pascoe, Golf 4, Uniform Sierra Bravo, became a silent key. He was one of the founders of International Marconi Day and the yearly organiser. This year's event will go ahead as planned, and the Cornish Amateur Radio Club expects to keep it running for many years to come. Unfortunately, an online attack has taken down the International Marconi Day websites. If you have already registered for IMD 2016, you need not take any further action. New footy stadium design worries airport radar. When the proposed home for a US football team was mooted under the approach to an airport, concerns were raised that its design could interfere with a vital radar system. The National Football League home in Los Angeles may have to be more like a stealth bomber than having a reflecting structure. The Federal Aviation Administration has declared the structure a hazard to aviation. It has proposed a suitable design and materials to reduce radio wave interference. The FAA reports the proposed Hollywood Park Stadium may block the radar's view, causing it to plot aircraft differently or have them flutter on a screen. Although negotiations are continuing, it's thought that instead of a reflective aluminium roof, it will use an absorbing outer coating as well as a reduced height. Amateur radio is alive and well. ARRL report growth in the US continued in 2015, with a record 735,405 licensees in the FCC's Universal Licensing System, ULS database, by the end of the year. That's up 9,130 over December 2014, a 1.2% rise, continuing a steady increase in the amateur radio population in every year since 2007. Like here in Australia, the ham scene is going very well. Australia isn't the only country hoping to bring more amateurs onto the air. In India, the Indian Institute of Hams has likewise begun an awareness campaign that reaches out specifically to youngsters in the port city of Mangaluru. The Institute's director said that it makes sense to have more active radio amateurs in a coastal location such as this, which is vulnerable to flooding and other disastrous conditions. He said only 100 hams are registered in Mangaluru, and of those, only 30 radio amateurs are considered active. Even though disaster communication is a priority, the Institute is stressing among young recruits radio's opportunities for global friendship and communication, as well as learning technical skills. In India, youngsters 12 and older are eligible to become licensed amateurs. <laughs> 